Hi and welcome to a quick demo of the 40Net 40AVP configuration guide. My name is Janar Garcia, Technical Marketing at 40Net, and it's exciting times with 40Net as we unveil a new product addition to our security portfolio called 40AVP. 40AVP stands for Advanced Bot Protection. So let's get started. 40 Guard Advanced Bot Protection is a SaaS-based solution designed to protect your online applications from malicious bot or any automated attacks. By incorporating 40 Guard Advanced Bot Protection into 40 Web or 40 ADC security policies, client traffic will get redirected to the 40 Guard ABP service online for inspection. It can analyze the traffic to identify any malicious bot behavior and suggest appropriate actions in response. 40 Guard AVP builds up a machine learning model to protect against a wide range of threats, including data harvesting, credential stuffing attacks, account taker attacks, and DDoS attacks. So let's cover the AVP deployment process. Before we go to the details of the implementation, let's review and discuss the AVP deployment process. There are three parts that we need to cover to make sure that your 40 ABP deployment is successful. All right, here's the first uh, deployment prerequisite. When you deploy the 40 ADC in the 40 web, it is shipped with a configuration called advanced bot domain. This is by default, it's enabled. Uh, what you need to do is be able to disable this using the CLI uh, going into your system config global and set the advanced dash bot uh, domain to disable mode. The next one is uh, we need to go into the 40 ADC and the 40 web. Uh, those things have to be licensed. Uh, without any license available, uh, this 40 ABP is not going to function. Also for 40 ABP, it has to have a valid license before any configuration is done. Um, the 40 ADC and the 40 web will act as a reverse proxy. So all requests, um, you know, that's coming in from a uh, client to a website, uh, everything is monitored and tracked, and it has to be provisioned within the 40 AVP portal. And then finally, um, the prerequisite section, you must have a valid credential and an access to a 40 AVP, 40 cloud.com portal. Uh, this is where the configuration will be set in lieu to the configuration that you have within the 40 ADC or the 40 web. Now on the middle section of the requirements list uh, for the application deployment, there are two requirements for the deployment. First one is to create a new application within the 40 AVP, that 40 cloud.com portal that basically will sync up with the application ID within the 40 ADC and the 40 web devices. I will show you a quick video on how uh, applications are configured between the 40 AVP and the 40 ADC or 40 web devices uh, later on in this video. And then finally, on the application deployment uh, uh, preparation, uh, you would need a PET preparation um, uh, instance where once the 40 guard AVP application is created, uh, the pre-provisioning process also begins, which triggers a request to the professional engagement team, uh, which is what we call PET, uh, to analyze your application details and also to identify URLs to protect and insert the required JavaScript so that it enables advanced protection to work uh, correctly. This process is currently conducted internally by the PET team. Again, PET stands for professional engagement team, and it requires two to three days to complete. If you wish to modify or add entries, please submit a request with the 40Net support group. Then the last step of the configuration process is to configure the 40 ADC and the 40 web itself, depending on the choice of reverse proxy you're gonna be using in this deployment, you could uh, deploy the 40 ADC or 40 web. But in this video, I'll give you the configuration samples on how to configure the 40 ADC. Uh, this is going to be the first demo, and then the second one will be 40 web. So let's get started.
All right, this is the application creation. And the first thing you need to do is log into your 40 ABP portal, log in with your credentials. And now select application, create new, enter domain name. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use www.test.com. Uh, uh, choose the region, which is US. And then here we're going to use test app. Now that the application uh, has been created, uh, we have a test app uh, application here. Uh, as you notice, it's on spending state. And as I mentioned before, it takes to two to three days uh, to have the test app to get into a ready state. So what we have done here is basically, in all accounts, when you log into 40ABP, there's always a demo site. Uh, that's widely available uh, that you can use to uh, pre-configure. And so within the demo site, uh, you have your signals as well as uh, uh, pre-provisioning uh, state. So let's get into the signals um, on the demo site, where, as I mentioned here, uh, as the process goes through the, uh, the signals, you have the ability to you know see the comments uh, from the PET team to make sure why is it not approved or any other comments they may have. Some of them here are already approved, uh, as you can see. And then from here, we also have the pre-provisioning, which we have two uh, entries here, which is the insert JS entries and the protect entries. Uh, these have the URLs that basically define the locations as well as different types of methods uh, that are required in order for this to be provisioned correctly. Now that we completed the application creation uh, from the 40ABB portal, we move on to the third uh, portion of the configuration, which is the 40ADC. Log into your 40 ADC, and then the first thing you need to do is to check the fiber connector to make sure 40 AVP is enabled, uh, which is enabled in this case. Now let's go into the 40 web application firewall and then select advanced bot protection and then create new, create a new name uh, from here, and it's going to ask for. Um, an application ID here. So we have to go back to the 40 cloud portal under pre-provisioning and you can see the application ID here, copy that. And also you can uh, do a copy from that actions tab. You paste it, verify, and it looks like it's success, which means that the 40 ADC has been successfully connected to our system. Uh, you can save it or you can make changes here or modify the action type and save it. And the next step is to go to the WAP profile to reference to the WAP profile. And in this case, we're going to use the for advanced bot protection. We selected the profile name and then that uh, WAP profile is also uh, done in the virtual server policy. So now that the 40 ADC is now connected to our system, so we can go to the connectors and basically the device uh, serial number and then the action we can edit or also we could also add the port or the IP address uh, which allows us to connect to the 40 ADC itself. All right, so this is the 40 web configuration. It's gonna be very similar as the 40 ADC. So let's log into 40 web. First thing you need to do here is to make sure that the, uh, the advanced bot protection is enabled on the dashboard under status, and then go to the bot mitigation, uh, advanced bot protection to create a new policy, uh, very similar to what you saw in ADC. Uh, enter a name um, and then go back again to the 
portal so we need the application ID you can copy it from there copy application ID and paste and then you make sure uh, you trigger that and it's basically successful um, and then the actions could be also change whatever you want it to be and then save and then make sure the policy is also referenced to the policy web protection profile and then from here you do a drop down to look for the under advanced web protection so it's referenced as well and then the web protection profile is also in the server policy and it's been connected and then let's check on the connector and as you can see this is the 40 web uh, listing here so that basically gives you a quick overview of how to integrate uh, based on the three steps that i provided i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching again